Hey guys, welcome to today's Geek Talk. Today we're going to be talking about Amon and how powerful he is. This one's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to have it scripted. It's going to be more of a freeform conversation with my good friend, Turk McGurk. Yes, uh, you can find her on her YouTube channel, which I believe is the same name. That, right? Yeah. Turk McGurk, T-U-R-K-M-A-G. No, <laughs> and then, yeah, then you change it, of course. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how powerful Amon is from Legend of Korra. Uh, first topic of discussion we're going to talk is Yakon. Yakon is a very interesting character. Character. It's it's cool to see them sort of carry over the unique benders um, from Avatar: The Last Airbender series, um, but they're actually called unique benders. Where in, in the original series they don't have like a they don't have an or actual like designation a or a name. They're yeah, it's kind of like these random people who are like incredibly. Um, I don't know, talented and have these very strange uh, bending abilities. Well, when he's introduced, we see him at this trial where he is being um, accused of bloodbending, but with uh, without the full moon. And before that point, like that's impossible. When we learn from Hama, that's yeah, only like yeah. we know that the power of, for waterbenders comes from the moon itself. And when it's at its fullest, that's when you're at your most powerful, which is when bloodbending, which is like you can control the water in someone's body and you can completely control them. And the great thing about Yakon, as we saw from the court scene, is he doesn't need the moon. Yeah, he doesn't need moon and he, he bloodbends everyone in that courtroom. Before with Hama, we saw her, you know, she yeah. messed around with the, the men in the village. That's she messed around that's with... That's incredible. Well, we actually get to see the complete origin of bloodbending. Like, right. where, how it uh, came to exist, where it's from, who created it, and just how um, powerful bloodbending as a bending is uh, separated from waterbending. Which, I mean, if I had to argue what the most powerful... Uh, bending style would be would probably be uh, water bending or blood bending yeah but I definitely I agree with that completely I don't think there's <laughs> anything beyond the avatar state itself yeah. that goes beyond blood bending and that is shown right in the scene with uh, avatar Aang he you see at first you see okay Toph is blood bending okay she's not a blood bender okay that's fine Sokka's blood bending he's a non bender whatever but then you see the sequence of like Aang and he's can't resist and you're like oh my god who yeah, is this like, Jacone guy everybody and there's I mean there's I feel like that's why they left out conveniently left out Katara. Like, maybe she's at home taking care of the kids. I don't know where she is, but she's not there. She's not being bloodbent because uh, the episode in Airbender when she was with Hama, she resists Hama. Yeah, she resists Hama. Hama was Hama's pretty yeah. damn good. I mean, she was the creator of bloodbending, so I would imagine she... Uh, Katara would have an easier time resisting that. But Yakon takes it a step further. He doesn't have to use hand gestures as uh, most waterbenders and bloodbenders have to do to, to you know, manifest their power. And that's what he teaches Tarlok and Noatok, who are his two sons. Tarlok was the main villain of book one. Well, not the main, like secondary villain, because Amon was the first the primary, primary villain. villain. Yeah. But at first, we think Tarlok is the main bending uh, villain until we find out that Amon is his brother and is also a waterbender and a bloodbender and that they're psychic bloodbenders at that which makes them all the more powerful they don't need huge gestures just, the, just their eye movements are yeah. enough to like hold everyone in place and I think what sets um, Tarlock apart from Amon was I think Amon was the only one who could do the the sight like bloodbending the psychic one yeah, yeah Tarlock needed his hands and stuff he talks about it when they were kids like how he mastered the, the I think visual psychic like bloodbending I think that's yeah, what it's like all psychic, it is yeah like um, psychic ability to bloodbend um, when he was like like a kid though he was maybe like 13 or he something. was 14 actually I rewatched it yeah. to make sure I was prepared for this yeah he, was, he said he mastered it at the age of 14 I just remember hearing teen at yeah, the yeah 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 no, he, was, he, was he was a teen which is what you kind of see with all the prodigies and uh, the story is that they all seem to come into their own at that age you yeah. know Aang was 12 uh, yeah 12 uh, so was Katara, uh, Toph uh, yeah, Katara yeah, was Toph. also I think Katara was a little bit older than Aang, right? She's 13 in yeah. the series, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually, it's it's so powerful uh, that it was outlawed by Katara, that bloodbending in, in general. Uh, I mean, it's that's so much control. Yeah. That's insane amount of control. Oh, yeah. And then Yakon even says during their training that um, their bloodline is the strongest family bloodline for, for bloodbending itself. So I wonder, we didn't really get what that was about or who their other family members were or are they connected to Katara in some yeah, way or whatever, yeah. you know, in, in that fashion. Or if there's even been um, bloodbending previous to right because it seemed like with Hama, Hama yeah it, was, it seemed like it was, was pretty unique she was the yeah she yeah. was the uh the original bloodbender. Right, yeah. But he does equal his father um, by the age of 14 where he you know, learns the psychic bloodbending and all that kind of stuff and then he goes off onto his own and then when we see him in book one, you know, fully formed as Amon, uh, we see that he has the additional ability to take someone's bending away. The most insane thing ever, I think, uh, and they, they reference when he's a kid, he tells his dad, Yakon, you talk about our family being the most uh, powerful, but we're not. 
the avatar is the most powerful thing. So it's like he mimics the avatar and taking people's bending away. Yeah, and I think that was that was probably the scariest element for me in book one is that sure you have someone who might be like better at you as a waterbender or firebender, but like for someone to take away your power. Yeah, I think that was also a really good uh, storyline. I feel like in heroes or any kind of superhero movie, they have that next men too where they take powers away. Uh, that's always something powerful is that if someone could take away just what you can do, what you do to become a hero, that was frightening to me. Like that yeah. first scene with the mon taking was, away. Um, was what was the guy's name? Uh, he was the, 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 the not. Um, he was the the name of the uh, the gangster Tano. that oh, no, no, no. that um, that uh, Mako's mentor. Lightning Bolt Zolt. Yeah, Lightning Bolt Zolt. And then I loved how they animated it too, because you see like his yeah. lightning, and then it goes to fire, and then because like, a yeah, little flame, like, and then done. Reverts back to being you know. Nothing. And then yeah. Bei Fong, when she gets her bending taken away, it's you're like, damn. Like, and every time they did it, it's it's like it made the the first season so dark or seem really dark. Is every time they did it, it's like someone died. It's like they would take their bending, and it's like all the life was sucked out of them. And they would just fall over. Like, oh my god, did they die? Yeah, it was it like. Was Nickelodeon's version because it's yeah. like a children's show of course so you yeah. don't want people to actually die gruesomely although Jet is probably like the only person who's actually yeah. died like on screen uh, but like yeah taking someone's bending away that's like almost equivalent to dying in like a children's show that's a really good way of doing that on another topic is how powerful was Amon with his water bending now as we know to become you know a relatively powerful blood bender you have to be a relatively good waterbender and we only see him do uh, waterbending once and that's when he's revealed as being Noatok not Amon uh, he's a waterbender when, he, he was when the scar man. went away yeah, and stuff yeah. like that and we see him make this huge water spout which is something that only um, masters are known to be able to do mm -hmm. um, and how he like goes underwater and he's like able to sustain himself and, it's and just escape like a, it's like an impulsive behavior too it's not something that he conjures it's right. like he just kind of comes out and he's like super powerful like what the hell so while it's very speculative I think it's within reason that he is probably a very good waterbender as well you know even though he had to hide it most of the time I mean, even though they did have a physical confrontation between uh, uh, Tarlock and Noah Talk, uh, when, when at first when we think Amon is just a regular non-bender mm -hmm. and he's like resisting bloodbending, we're like, what is? Who is this guy? Yeah, you know? Yeah, that I think that was probably the moment that I was like, whoa, what the hell is going on? Um, you have all these. I remember at the time everyone was like super crazy. The internet blew up like, oh my god, who is Amon? And they, everyone had these crazy theories, mm -hmm. um, you know, like tinfoil hat theories. Um, <laughs> and I remember seeing that episode when he, you know, like resists resist his uh, blood bending he's walking toward him he's like what are you and he's like oh my god what is this guy um that was insane that he got that far and he rose to power that way basically uh, under the guise that he was a non-bender yeah. that's crazy yeah that was really great and then okay now the next topic we're gonna talk about is a uh, core and mako resisting amon's blood bending what do you feel i have thoughts about this specifically uh what are your thoughts about uh that though that sequence i mean he he goes on to sort of say, um, I mean, Korra, she's the Avatar. That's, you know, right off the bat. I'm like, I don't know, Korra's the Avatar, so it's, it's a different story. But uh, Mako, he, he even tells him, like, you know, no one's ever no one's um, ever been able to get the best of me like that. And then he tells him, like, it's, uh, it's a shame almost to take, a shame yeah. to take uh, the bending of someone so talented. Yeah, almost. that's exactly what he said. Yeah, yeah almost. Boom, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen those books so many times. Um, and that's why I think a lot of people like underestimate Mako. I know this is a different topic. I don't want to get too far of it. But people yeah, underestimate yeah. Mako as someone who yeah. is extremely talented with his fire and lightning bending. I think, and I think it's it's underplayed at times because, and as a a big problem, I think, with fight inconsistencies throughout the show, mm -hmm. where Mako is a lot. I I think Mako is a lot better than Bolin. Bolin's still mm -hmm. really underdeveloped. And Mako, he seems like very early on too, like this prodigy, but they're constantly getting their butts kicked, like constantly. Uh, they can't even win like a street fight. They're, they're great, um, they're great athletes. Mm. But yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, Mako definitely, um, I think it's just, he's an incredibly talented bender. He has a high aptitude for it. Yeah, I think I'm fine with Mako resisting the blood bending because what he did is that he just was able to just get his fingers yeah, out of it, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's okay, because people do have kind of control of their fingers when you see the blood bending happening. Yeah. Uh, but with Korra, I think it's something of just plot was necessary yeah, so, yeah, you yeah. know how she regained her no, um don't. her she air says, bending and yeah, yeah. It, was just, it was just kind of like uh she, she's got to win somehow write it in that uh, yeah she resisted you know yeah. uh but of course you can if you want to retcon it yourself you can say oh she's the avatar she Fall resisted it because you know she has the avatar spirit within her that, I mean, that resisted that sort of poses the question to me she was trained by katara her water bending comes from being trained by katara do right you, but she never learned you, blood bending though very true but do yeah. you think that do you think that Katara's? Do you think that Katara could have um, resisted, resisted Amon? Amon's now that's the next question. I'm actually actually we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but I do want uh, to. That's uh, no, that. that's the next thing. That's probably the final thing that we'll, we'll factor in. Um, but I would say that uh, possibly the reason why um, Korra was able to to get through that is because of. Uh, 
possibly one of her chakras being unlocked. Now that's the complete theory on my part, yeah. but just same with how Aang had to unlock all of his chakras to enter the Avatar state mm -hmm. willingly. That could have been at, at play here, that seeing Mako about to take her, I mean, that's like her boyfriend at that point, or wannabe boyfriend at yeah. that point. So like that. was that, her love interest. You know, that. Really important at the time. <laughs> exactly. At the time. Oh, uh, okay, let's not get into that. Um, so yeah, that that's cool. So next thing I want to define just in general is what we define as power. What to you defines power? What makes someone powerful? Yeah, that's okay. I mean, I'll go first while you like yeah, mull yeah, over. Yeah, go for it. Um, so for me, I would say uh, power, I mean, as it's defined in the dictionary, it's just the behavior behavior uh wait the the ability to influence behavior of others or course of events um which to me just means that your ability to control just control a situation oh so you mean like in power in general just in, yeah, in the sense yeah. of the word not so much in how it is like in, the, in the universe ability, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so something like blood bidding to me i think is the epitome of what power is, is that you can control like completely like yeah. what your no opponent is going to do yeah. Um, so I think for me, just as we are getting into how powerful is Amon, blood bending, as I think we already said in the beginning, yeah, is definitely the, most, the powerful. most powerful form of bending next to the Avatar state, of course. All right, and that brings us to basically answering how powerful is Amon, and that, I think, comes with the territory of talking about Katara, because he's the only one, or she's the only one, that I feel like would stop him from that level of most powerful bender, period. Yeah, it's really convenient that Katara wasn't there at the courtroom scene. Right, or there at Republic City. Ever. You know. Yeah, she was just nowhere to be found. And I feel like that would have just been a gaping hole, um, plot hole in the story. Um, like they just completely avoided that altogether. You know what? Mm -hmm. Let's not do that. Because Kar Katara could just come in and just end this entire story. Like just take out Amon or at least help them take out Amon. Right. Um, man, that's a good. Now for me, I'm going to say something that's not going to be very popular among Last Airbender fans because the last Airbender fans are very touchy about their original characters, so if you ever say anything against them, even if you do have a sound argument, you know. We are. We're very <laughs> touchy. <laughs> now, here's the thing that, going back to Yakone uh, in that courtroom scene, uh, it was established at that time that bloodbending without a full moon was extremely preposterous. Like, that wasn't even, like, a thing that could possibly be a thing. Even though there's been unique vendors, like... Even though there's been unique yeah. vendors with Toph and, are, you know... Uh, incredibly um, far-fetched like that's not a thing there's no way science you know bending science uh, differs than that so right but for that to be surprising even from the outset makes me think that at that point Katara never exhibited any kind of bloodbending outside the full moon yeah meaning that she needed the full moon to be able to bloodbend so for Yakone to have that and subsequently for um, Amon to have that and to take that a step further with being able to take someone's bending away yeah, that's just ridiculous. makes me believe that he is going to be more powerful than Katara. Oh yeah. You know. I agree there. Based on that, you know, form yeah. of logic, even though I know that's very going to be very unpopular, you know. I mean, the same way that like I hated hearing it, but I knew it was true in book one where uh, Hiroshi Sato tells uh, Toph, or not Toph, uh, Beifong, like even your esteemed mother couldn't bend a metal so pure. Right. Like, right. You don't, don't say you don't that say about her. No, you can't you can talk about Toph. I just made okay. It's really funny. My uh, Toph versus K Kuvira. I made an inconclusive verdict because we don't know what Toph's prime is and stuff like that. But just even saying that alone is like what you 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 won't you won't say she's gonna stop her. I'm not like, gonna lie. What? That's my least favorite video of yours. <laughs> See exactly, and, and and quite a few because people are like, no, you have to say because she's Toph. Yeah. She's just Toph. You, you can't you can't you can't go against. I anybody, mean, her but. out of all. I I think with her in particular, we're just. I mean, not just why I love her so much, but her out of almost all the Airbender characters, she was like the most uh, powerful. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. Of, I think of just her I mean, bending she, talent. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I mean, she, she was like ten, them. or she was like nine when they found her. So nine or ten? No, she was the same age as uh, Aang. She was, was 12. Was she 12? Yeah, she was 12. She was the same I age. I thought she was a little younger than him. Yeah, she seems it because she's so short. But, Probably. But uh, she's the same age, uh, uh, same age as him. Oh, yeah, yeah. She says, I'm, but I'm 12 years old and mm -hmm. I never had a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Right. So, yeah. Um, I personally think Amon is uh, the more powerful of Katara. So, I think, personally, I think Amon is, uh, outside of Avatars, of course, um, the most powerful bender in the series with all of that oh, yeah. reasoning and deduction that I, I just pointed out. I don't know about you, but... I agree. Re I, reluctantly? Begrudgingly. No, I mean, like, <laughs> I agree, and I think that's why season one was so good, and I wish it was self-contained. Don't get me wrong, I love book... Well, I don't love book two. Oh, my God. I can't believe I was about to say that. Whoa. Uh, book three... Book four is really good. I have a lot of beef with book four, but book three, I think is sort of the saving grace to having three more books for me. That's just me. Um, but I really wish four or the first book would have been self-contained because that 
how do you top that bad guy? Yeah. They did, but it's like... What's well, here? Yeah, but... Yeah. I think Sahir comes really close um, to being equal, but that poses an interesting fight. Who would win between uh, Aman and Zaheer? So many people <laughs> ask that, too. Um, and uh, maybe I'll do that one, but I feel like it's it's it's, it's a case of, an, of... It's so... It's like, okay, uh, how far does his bloodbending go? Like, because yeah. it's the flight thing, you know? Yeah. Like, that's a whole different discussion, but... That, um, that's, that's more, like, theoretical. <laughs> yeah, that's way more theoretical. Physics. Right, yeah, because yeah. they're using things that are very, like, yeah. we don't really know how that works. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that that, that is uh, that episode. Aman, we both believe, is the most powerful bender of the series outside of avatars uh, of course um my name is antoine you guys know me of course but turk go ahead and plug yourself and all the things you do oh i do things and stuff sometimes when i'm not lazy uh <laughs> i have uh, some let's plays and some podcasts and reaction videos right now because it's about all i have time for so give it a whirl yeah, you'll see a, a description link somewhere top right corner or in the description box below. But thank you guys for listening. Uh, peace, love, and remember, my friends, be water. <laughs>